Hi, boys and girls. I'm going to read the storybook. It's called Happily Ever After Stories. And the first story where I'm going to read you, boys and girls, it is called Cinderella, My Perfect Wedding. Let's see. Let's begin the story. Come on. Cinderella's dreams were coming true at last. With the help of her mouse friends, she had managed to race down the stairs just in time to let the Grand Duke place the glass slipper on her foot. Now she and the prince were going to be married and their brand new life together filled with happiness would soon begin. But first, there was a wedding to plan. So now I'm gonna start planning the wedding. So then we're gonna get married for Prince. Cinderella didn't have the faintest idea where to begin. Prudence, who ran the castle household for the king, was happy to take charge. She sat with Cinderella and read off a, a long list of things that needed to be done for the wedding. Excuse me, Prudence, Cinderella said as soon as Prudence had paused for a moment. But couldn't the prince and I just have a simple wedding? Prudence frowned. Cinderella, now that you are going to be a princess, you must start thinking big. So there's Prudence, and she wants to start thinking big, but Cinderella doesn't want a big wedding. I think she wants to have a little wedding. Later on, the royal dressmaker arrived with several wedding gowns. The first gown was covered with bows and sashes. The guests will make would mistake me for a present, cried Cinderella. You look just like a princess, Prudence said. Do you think you could design something plainer? Cinderella asked. No, Prudence exclaimed. Plain and princess do not go together. The next day, Prudence and Cinderella visited the castle's royal florist shop. The royal florist greeted them with a bush. At least Cinderella thought it looked like one. This is lovely, she said. But do you think you have something a bit smaller? It is perfect, Prudence said. You just have to know how to carry it. She held the flowers out in front of her and was stung by a bee. Nice, Prudence. Just a baby. It looks like Cinderella's just about a present. Prudence will never learn a lesson. That afternoon, the mice found Cinderella all by herself in the garden. Where is Mossy Lady? asked Gus. Poor Prudence, replied Cinderella. She got quite a nasty sting from that bee. The royal physician says she must stay in bed for the rest of the day. But what about the wedding plans? Jack asked. I'll just have to take care of them myself, Cinderella declared. Now what should I do first? Who's a coming, Cinderella? wondered Jack. The guest list, good idea. Jack, let's see. Well, of, of course, all of you are invited. Cinderella replied, and my fairy godmother, actually, I wish she were here right now. So Cinderella had a plan to do her wedding without Prudence, because Prudence was stung by a bee, and now Prudence is in bed. But now she's going to ask her fairy godmother to help her with the wedding. And she invited the mice, the mice, the mice to her wedding. And almost as fast as Cinderella wished it, her fairy godmother appeared. After giving Cinderella a big hug, she said, Hmm, 
I just love weddings, the beautiful gown, the towering cake, the romantic music, and I'm sure everything you picked out is just lovely. Cinderella admitted she hadn't actually picked out anything yet. And when is the wedding, dear? asked the fairy godmother. Gus counted on his fingers. Tomorrow, he announced. Oh, my goodness, child, cried the fairy godmother. Then we'll we be better get started. Lots to do, Jack added. He and Gus unfurled. Prudence list for the fairy godmother to see. So the fairy godmother appeared now. They're going to start doing the wedding. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Boys and girls. We'll plan an absolutely magical wedding for you, dear. The fairy godmother gushed. Now, let's begin. But the dress. With a wave of the fairy godmother's wand, Cinderella was instant, instantly adorned in an elegant white gown. But her fairy godmother had forgotten the veil. It is beautiful, Cinderella said, but don't you think it needs? But the fairy godmother wasn't listening. She had already moved on to the next item. Invitations, she declared in the blink of an eye. Hundreds of lovely cards sat in stacks around the room. Now we shall prepare the feast and make the cake, the fairy godmother announced. I want everything to be perfect. So there she fixed Cinderella's dress and now the gown is so beautiful. So now there's the invitation and now they're going to start baking a cake. Cinderella changed back into her blue dress and followed the fairy godmother to the royal kitchen. Meanwhile, the mice stayed behind picking up where the fairy godmother had left off. Mary, Susie, and Perla lifted some scissors and cut a small piece of fabric from the long train of Cinderella's wedding gown. Then they threaded needles, pulled it out a box of tiny pearls, and went to work on a veil. Imitations, Jack announced. Instantly, the mice lined up and each received an armload of cards to deliver throughout the kingdom. They didn't get very far before their plans were spoiled by Pom Pom. A castle cat. Uh oh. They were planning to send out the invitations, but Pom Pom interrupted their plans. But now the man mice are helping Cinderella to invite everybody, and that's really nice of them helping a good friend. Woo! Close a call! cried Jack as he and Gus raced away from Pom Pom and caught up with Cinderella in the castle kitchen. And now for the best part, the fairy godmother announced. Cinderella watched as her fairy godmother squeezed her eyes shut in concentration. Then, with one grand sweep of her wand, the fairy godmother created the Biggest, fanciest cake Cinderella had ever seen. What do you think? The fairy godmother asked. Cinderella tried to hide her disappointment, said. Evenly, um, Prudence will love it. And speaking of Prudence, I really should go see how she's feeling. Look at that beautiful cake that looks delicious to eat, boys and girls. Ooh, Glenn. Cinderella has a very good fairy godmother and that's looking out for her. Poor child, said the fairy godmother after Cinderella had left. I think all these wedding plans are too much for her. Jack and Gus tugged at the fairy godmother's sleeve. Cinderella likes smaller things, Jack told her. 
Gus pointed out proudly to himself, like mice. All at once, the fairy godmother understood. Later in Cinderella's chamber, the fairy godmother took Cinderella's hands. I'm afraid may have gotten a bit carried away, my dear, the fairy godmother said. Child, what would the wedding of you dreams be like? So she's asking Cinderella, what will her wedding dreams be like? So now she's going to help Cinderella. And all thanks to Jack, Jack, and Gus, who told the fairy godmother the truth about what's going on with Cinderella in the castle. After listening to Cinderella, the fairy godmother began to perform her magic. With a wave of her magic, sorry, with a wave of her wand, the hundreds of tiny pearls the mice were stitching onto Cinderella's veil were soon into a place. Then she sent the invitation out the windows to their destinations. Now let's cut that cake down the, to size, the fairy godmother said, with a twinkle in her eye. But before the two departed for the kitchen, Cinderella stopped and looked tenderly at the kind, kind-hearted mice. Thank you, my little friends, she said gratefully. So now her dreams of having a nice, beautiful wedding is coming true. All thanks to her friends, the mice, and the furry godmother. It's good to have friends that be there for you. The next day, Cinderella looked lovely in her simple white gown veil and gloves in her hands. She carried a small bouquet of garden flowers that the mice had gathered for her. But just as the king was about to escort her down the aisle, the aisle, Cinderella looked down and gave a little cry of surprise. The fairy godmother followed the bride's gaze. Good heavens, child, she exclaimed. You can't get merry in your bare feet. She waved her wand, and two glass slippers peeked out from beneath Cinderella's gown. Wow. So now she's ready for a wedding. And everybody's waiting for Cinderella. Even her Prince Charming is waiting for her, boys and girls. After the ceremony, the prince and Cinderella shared a joyous celebration with their guest. It was the most wonderful wedding anyone in the kingdom could ever remember. Even Prudence was pleased. How ever did you manage all of this? The prince asked his new princess. Cinderella smiled and said, with friends by your side, anything is possible. So I guess anything is possible. And look, she got married with her Prince Charming, boys and girls. Cinderella. And that's the end of our story. Well, everybody has dreams that comes true. Even Cinderella they had a dream of her wedding with a prince that she loves for all her life. And now her dreams have came true because she made it come true, boys and girls. She used all her heart and from the love of her friends and the fairy godmother, her dreams have finally came true to have a perfect wedding and a loving Prince Charming who's gonna be there for her. All right, I'll be right back with my buddies.